Well, first of all, I want to say I'm, I'm sorry for your loss, and, and, but at the same time, it's an honor to be able to be here with you. And we do gather here this morning to, before God, to remember before God also, Alan Ross Demler. We're going to give thanks for his life, and we're going to commend him to our loving God, and as well ask for comfort for one another in our grief. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have blessed us with the hope of eternal life through the death and resurrection of your Son. Look with love on your people who are grieving. Comfort them in their sorrow. Make them firm in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning I thought I'd choose a, a scripture passage that's not a typical funeral one, but to me it talked a little bit about journeying on a road and it's the the story of the Emmaus, uh, the two disciples going on that road, from Luke 24. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all those things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of those whose name was Cleopas answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. And yes, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of the group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and they did not find his body there. They came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went back to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see him. And Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Now they came near to the village where they were going, and he walked as if he was going on, but they urged him strongly, say, stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in and stayed with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, were our hearts not burning with us while he was on the road and while he was opening the scriptures to us? And at the same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. I think all of us, if, if we look back on, on our lives, we can see the various of events which can easily be turned into stories. I'm sure you've told many stories. You've been telling a few out here, uh, the skipping from school and over here. And, and yeah, I was saying, well, after Dad drove you on the school bus, you probably skipped out and came through there, but mm, had to make sure you got back to that part there too afterwards. And yet, you know, each of these stories, which come together over time, they form one story. A story that is profoundly ours and, and actually also very unique. It becomes ours. And these stories are so special because it's through these stories that we come to understand who we are. I wish I got to know your dad. He sounds like he would have been a wonderful gentleman 
to know. But I didn't have the opportunity to know your dad, grandpa, or brother. But I did get a little sense of it, who he was from your obituary and, and from talking to you, Debbie, on the phone as well. And, and actually, even yesterday from one of the nurses that I had a conversation with said they appreciated your dad so much at the hospital. They said he was such a kind and gentle man. His story and his life expanded probably even beyond just you yourself. And I think that's what makes today so difficult. Because in one way, it seems to us that Alan's story has come to an end. But we can also maybe understand then how those two disciples felt as they wearily went back to Emmaus that Easter Sunday evening. The story of Jesus, which they had filled their lives with hope and meaning, had ended in death. But then Jesus joined them, even if they failed to recognize him at that point. But he encouraged them to talk. He encouraged them to share as they continued to pour out their story to him. They told him the good parts. They told him the sad ending. See, for, for them, the death of Jesus signified the end of the story, the end of the dream, the end of everything. But then having listened to them, Jesus continued and picked up where they left off. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And then he opened their eyes so that they could recognize him. That very one who died was right there beside them, not by their side. So see, we hear now then how death does not have the last word of the story after all. Alan, the one who loved to just pop in the, the truck and go for drives. And it sounds like there wasn't even an itinerary. No. Maybe him and I wouldn't get along. <laughs> I like to have an itinerary and know where I'm stopping along the way and book my rooms ahead of time. I, I wouldn't be able to drive like that. I would go crazy. But that's wonderful. Wonderful how he was able just to explore almost the entire province of Manitoba, you were saying even. Just drive and see where the road took him. As well as the dedicated bus driver who gained the respect of the students on all the bus. Alan, the, the father and grandfather and brother who was so special to all of you. The roads that you're going to travel now and all the memories as you go down as well, knowing that those stories are a part of you as well now too. We know that Alan is now at peace and we can continue to remember him in the ways that he was special to each and every one of you. And may you always know that Jesus, your risen Lord, walks with you. And you are never alone. And may God's love, comfort, and peace surround you not only today, but always. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that you would care and support all who mourn this day. We give you thanks for Alan, for the grace and mercy that he received from you, for all that was good in his life, and for the many memories that we treasure this day. We entrust all who are dear to us to your never-failing care and love, for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, 
Alan Ross Demler. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Holy God, by the death and burial of Jesus, your anointed, you have destroyed the power of death and made holy the resting places of all your people. Keep Alan, whose ashes we now lay to rest, in the company of all your saints. And at last, O God, raise him up to share with all the faithful the endless joy and peace won through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We commend to Almighty God, Alan Ross Demler, and we commit his ashes to the resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord's face look upon him with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon him with favor and give him peace. Amen. Holy God, you have blessed us with the hope of eternal life through the death and resurrection of your Son. Be with us now and be with all who grieve. Comfort them in their sorrow. Make them firm in faith and hope. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loves us and gives us comfort and hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish in them every good work and word. Let us go forth in peace.